Chris Bowen was at it again this morning, doling out $432 million for a green hydrogen hub in the Hunter Valley, despite Origin Energy's withdrawal from the project late last year. And true to form, Bowen used this as a chance to get on his high horse. There's plenty of people who say, oh, green hydrogen's too hard. There's plenty of them in politics. There's plenty of them in the media. Sitting like Stadler and Waldorf up in the... up watching the Muppets criticising everything. Well, actually, green hydrogen is hard, but not impossible. Now, as I said, there's only one, one Muppet show, and that's Bowen himself. Joining me now is Aidan Morrison, Director of Energy Research at the Centre for Independent Studies. Aidan, welcome. Thank you very much for joining me. Green hydrogen uh, is failing across the country. It's failed across the world. What does it say when you have Origin pull out of a project and then the taxpayer having to come back in and try and prop it up again? It says that Chris Bowen is willing to spend unlimited money to rescue his own narrative at taxpayers' expense. That's what's happening. This is a very, this is a quite a small hydrogen project. It's 50 megawatts electrical, and he's spending $430 million on trying to support that project. Just to put this in perspective, 50 megawatts is about 0.3% of as much hydrogen as the current integrated system plan expects we're going to have in the future. So if this is a 0.3% effort and it already costs $430 million to support it, we're going to be spending hundreds of billions of dollars of taxpayers' money to get to where he says we're going to go. So this is just an absolutely incredible slap in the face for taxpayers because it shows that he's willing to spend any amount of money to score a tiny win. And what's more, I'd like to emphasise that Orica says on their own information page this will only displace 7.5% of the natural gas they need. So this is a $430 million subsidy for a project that displaces 7.5% of one industrial user's gas. So it is just an absolutely absurd amount of money to be spending on such a small project. And to, to, to bank all this money on, on green hydrogen, it's not working. I, I just think it's just fatal to be putting all your eggs in one basket here. And I've got to show you this because Chris Bowen was also asked about former Queensland Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk's comments that hydrogen is proving to be in the too hard basket. This is what his response was. Well, here we are today. I think it's in the hard basket, not the too hard basket. You know... Uh, you think she's wrong? Well, I'm answering your question. If you ask a question, if you give me a chance to answer it, I will. Uh, it's in the hard basket. Uh, but we don't put things in the hard basket and then ignore them. We put things in the hard basket and work on them together. Uh, so, Aidan, who's right, Bowen or Palaszczuk? Look, it's uh, Palaszczuk is correct, but it always was too hard. Green hydrogen is basically impossible. And to make it even remotely possible, you need to have renewable energy that is completely reliable and essentially free. All right? It is just so hard. It is impossible to make hydrogen work economically at all. And it's certainly not impos possible if you don't have absolutely, essentially free um, electricity, uh, renewable electricity. We're proving at the moment, every day is revealing that uh, renewable electricity is actually quite expensive once you try to make it reliable. And so there is just no chance that any of this stacks up. So he's just forcing it. Absolute pure brute force, throw any amount of taxpayers' dollars. It's a whatever-it-takes subsidy to get a small, small win on the board. And it's absolutely disgraceful. Yeah, it's uh, extraordinary. Now, New South Wales's flagship renewables project, this centres around Dubbo and Dunedoo in the regions, has already blown out by billions of dollars. When it was announced five years ago, it was estimated to cost $650 million. It's now risen to $5.4 billion as of February last year. This is the Central West Arana Renewable Zone. Aidan... You know, how can the government keep telling us over and over that this is the cheapest form of energy when the projects are blowing out or being delayed or cancelled? Look, they can't. We just have to accept that they're lying to our faces now. And fortunately, the Central West Arana project, it's the first cab off the rank to actually sort of hit the full regulatory process. And it's actually going to prove, it's going to prove that renewable energy costs a whole lot more than what we've been told. And as you can see, as you mentioned, $650 million to $5.4 billion is a massive blowout. And part of that we can explain, because it was meant to be just a single link, like one central highway into the area, and all the other generators would then pay their own connection to that spot. And what it's turned out to be is a total spider web where the central transmission uh, company has to basically build 
build out all the network and all the driveways right into the guts of the renewable energy project. So it's massively expanded in scope because basically the generators can't afford to pay an extra dollar for any tiny amount of transmission and still have any hope. But in fact, they still get subsidies from the, uh, from the federal capacity investment scheme. So as this comes out, it looks like basically the transmission is going to cost quite a bit of a premium on top of the actual generation of electricity. And we've always been told by CSIRO and everyone else that the transmission is only a very small premium to pay. So this is one of the reasons why New South Wales electricity bills had the highest hike of any of the states in the latest change to the default market offer, which is the regulator's cap on energy prices. New South Wales prices are now rising the fastest because of projects like this. And one final reason to mention is that it's quite clear the New South Wales government is paying a higher return on capital than what is normally accepted for all the other transmission in the, uh, in the network. So that's mm. still an unknown number. We don't know how much it is because it's been redacted. So they're actually paying the companies building this a great a return on capital than for other projects too. So it's undoing the narrative quite demonstrably. Yeah, all hitting the, the family bills, all hitting those electricity bills at the same time. Adam Morrison, thank you very much for joining me on the show. Really appreciate it.